Handy Kitchen. Today I'm going to be making fish cakes. Now, I think tinned fish gets a really bad rap, but it's so handy to keep in the cupboard. Um, it's cheap, it's absolutely full of um, goodness um, and fatty acids, and it's a really cheap meal to make. Uh, kids love it. Actually, I like this too. It's got lots and lots of flavour, so much better than anything you can buy. In this bowl here, I have um, mashed potato, and the only thing I've added to it is salt um, for seasoning. I've left it to go completely cold, um, and as you can see, it's like great big lumps, um, and it doesn't look very appetising at the moment. So, into this, I'm going to pop a teaspoon of, this is eschalot, it's just like an, or an onion powder will be just as good, um, but they're just granules and it gives things a really nice flavour. Into that as well, I'm going to put a teaspoon of chilli flakes. Now we come to the fish. Now, I've got a very small tin of tuna um, in brine, um, which I've drained and pressed so it's not too wet. There we go. And in here, the pièce de la résistance, or the thing that's going to give this even more flavour, I have 250 grams of sardines in tomato sauce. Some, sometimes they're called pilchards, but they're the same thing at the end of the day. So in they go. Oh, sauce as well. All we need to do now is mix this together. And it, although it doesn't look very good, <laughs> I may have to get my hand in here because what we want is not to see potato anymore. We want to just see this all mixed together beautifully. I think I am going to get in here with my hand. Oh dear, what a mess. But it doesn't matter. You can wash your hand. It's not a problem, is it? Because I need this all together beautifully. Actually, that feels quite nice. <laughs> I do have clean hands, by the way. So, just get it thoroughly, thoroughly mixed. And as you can see, this is actually one of the very first recipes I made when I got back into the kitchen. Um, my kids love it, or used to love it. They don't live at home anymore. Um, but, it's so economical when you're trying to feed a family. It really is. There we go. That's more or less in. I can't really see any more potato in there. Oh, look at this. Needless to say, you'll have to wash your hand. Now, all we're going to do with this now is pop this in the fridge to set. Or stiffen up a little bit. So it's nice and cold to handle later on. So I'll see you when this is chilled down. Okay, my potato is rested now, so I'm good to go. I've got a run of stuff here. It's about getting organized. I've got my biggest ice cream scoop. I've got a bowl of flour. I've got a bowl of beet egg. And I have um, breadcrumbs. I'll give you the measurements for these afterwards. This is literally just slices of bread that I've blitzed down in my food processor. So the first thing I need to do is take a scoop and I'm using my largest scoop for this of dough into my flour. Actually, I don't think I need the mould at all. Look, that's actually come out quite well. You have to be quite gentle with this. It's now going into my egg. Now, I don't want to get 
absolutely smothered in egg. So I'm going to use a spatula, an egg slice to do this and hope it works. Oh, there we go. Right, I'm covered in egg here. Just make sure it's really covered. I can reshape this once I'm done. Then, that's why it's a good idea because I can drain this. I won't absolutely soak my breadcrumbs into the breadcrumbs and push those in all round. There we go. Oh, I don't actually need my mould at all. Look at these. That's gone really well. Now I'm going to put that straight onto greaseproof paper on a pan because I need to chill these again before I cook them. So here we go again. And it's really quite stiff now, this dough. So into my flour and give it a bit of a shape. Just make sure it's coated. I'll reshape again at the end into my egg. And I'm gonna use my spatula because this can get really messy if you don't do this. <laughs> I can assure you. So, there we go. And it's all easy to do one-handed. Then, a bit of egg on that bit I can see is a little bit dry there into my breadcrumbs. I'm gonna just cover it completely and zhuzh it round like that. Then I can start to shape it. There we go. Look at that. How easy is this to do? Just keep going. I'm gonna try and get them sort of the same size because that would be nice. Oh, they actually smell really good already. I'm not even cooking them yet, look at that. I'm still getting flour everywhere. What can you do? Right, baste it. This is the easiest way, I think, to do these, and you don't have to sort of manhandle them too much. Just make sure you get that egg everywhere, because otherwise your breadcrumbs are not gonna stick, are they? Right, drain it into the breadcrumbs. Easy as that. You can do this set at the table and it's just a process. When they're done, I'm gonna put these back into the fridge to chill down before I cook. So they're nice and firm in that shape. I'll see you when I'm ready to cook. Well, I've chilled down my fish cakes and they're nice and firm at the moment. Now, there's no way we're gonna eat six, seven, eight, nine, 10 of these, which is what I got out of the mix that I've given you the recipe for. So what I will do is I will flat freeze some of these and then I will put them onto, I get these little papers, and um, they're usually for burgers. And what I'll do is stack them like that and then put them into freezer bags. Uh, and they're good to go then. You can just take them out and cook them from frozen whenever you're ready. So, I'm heating a pan with a little oil in here. Um, and I've got this on sort of medium. So, oh, I'll start with these ones because I'm going to flat freeze those. So, in they go, just so they're just sizzling nicely. I'm only going to cook two now. And the rest I will freeze later. So, we want to cook these on a sort of medium heat. We don't want to move them about. What we would like to do is just let them cook through on the bottom. There's nothing in here um, that really needs cooking through. It's not like we're using raw meat. So 
it's more of a heating process than it is cooking. We just want to crisp the outside and make those nice and warm through. I think you need to cook these really about four minutes each side and that will give those a really nice crunch. I do smaller ones than this for buffets. Um, you can do them round, you can really get creative with these and actually these are so easy to make with one hand. Um, again, it's one of those recipes. Oh look, one of those recipes that um, I made for the first first time, not, it was a while after my stroke. Um, but when I got back into the kitchen, these are one of the th first things I made because they were really easy to do. Um, you can make these from leftover fresh potatoes or you can use um, potato flakes. Just make them up, um, no, no butter, no anything, um, just a bit of salt and then you can leave them to go cold and you can use those. It works just as well. Today potato flakes are really good, they're not like they used to be years ago and there's a lot of things that you can make with them so they're well worth buying occasionally. Well there you go. These are cooked and ready to go. I would normally drain these on a bit of um, kitchen paper, but I'm running out of space here. Look at those. Aren't they just gorgeous? There's nothing further to do than taste test these now, and I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, look. Now, that just looks wonderful. There's none of your shop bought white, horrible stuff here. This is going to be hot, isn't it? Mm. That was too big a bit to taste. They are gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. You can see the fish running through that. You really need those pilchards or sardines with the tomato sauce. That's what really gives these a nice kick. Plus, the little bit of chilli that I put in there. That really, really lifts this above anything. If you think you don't like fish cakes, you need to try this recipe. Honestly, they are so tasty. You don't need sauce, you don't need anything else with these. These carry the flavour all on their own. Mm. And those breadcrumbs are super crunchy. Lovely. Well, if you liked what you saw, please like, share and subscribe to see me make more cost-effective, homemade, delicious food. Thank you for watching.